Whenever I'm gaming on my phone, whether I'm playing a native app game or I'm remote playing my PlayStation or Xbox, it's really important to me that I do my best to transform my phone into effectively a handheld. Yeah, but you can use a controller with a grip and that gets the job done, but a dedicated controller style attachment has always been my preferred way. And today I'm taking a look at a brand new one that's just been recently announced. I've had my hand on for a little while now from today's sponsor, GameSir, the G8 Galileo. This is a full-size style controller grip, meaning that while it is not as trim and as portable as some other ones out there, uh, it is a much more comfortable one to use because it actually matches the feeling of using a regular full-size controller. Meaning the focus here is really a lot more on ergonomics and comfort and getting the best feeling gameplay experience possible so you can play for hours on end without having discomfort. Now this particular game controller is USB-C, which with recent changes to iPhone means that it works on the most recent iPhone models, the 15 and 15 Pro, while also working across a very large variety of Android devices. It's able to extend pretty wide to the point you can fit a very large number of devices into this. Uh, in fact, aside from just simply using it with an iPhone 15, I also tried out a Razer tablet that I have on hand, which is fairly large uh, and is able to fit into the grip no problem. And one of the interesting aspects of the design is that the USB-C port on it actually has a degree of intentional flexibility along with a reduced footprint so that it's able to more easily plug into a variety of devices depending on how deep the device is and how the USB-C port is shaped relative to the grip uh, as well as being able to fit even when you have a case on it. So for instance, trying out a case on the iPhone 15, you're still able to plug it into the Galileo, no problems whatsoever. Now the way this is able to work across a variety of different devices is it actually has three different modes that can be activated. Uh, by default, it is set to an Android mode so you just plug in whatever Android phone or tablet you wanna use with it and and begin playing right then and there. Holding the view and menu buttons at the same time for a few seconds will change the mode over into an iOS mode so you can use it with the iPhone 15. Uh, or holding it again will enter a mapping mode so that when used on Android and you're playing any games that don't support native controller support, you can map touchscreen controls to the different buttons on the controller in order to have it work in those situations. This is particularly helpful in cases like PlayStation Remote Play where that's a little more fickle on what controllers it officially supports and allows you to use. So instead of having to rely on a DualSense or one of the officially recognized options by PlayStation, you can use this controller that way just by taking a little bit of time to set up this mapped option. Now again, the main focus of this controller though really is the fact that it is a full-size style controller offering the comfort and grip of a traditional controller, along with a handful of light pro level style features integrated into the design that are really handy. The first thing worth mentioning is the fact that these are taking advantage of Hall Effect sensor sticks. Uh, if at all you're unfamiliar with this concept, basically it's a stick style that is not capable of developing drift the same way that more traditional potentimeter style sticks can. So that is a much better peace of mind in the long run, also helps with the accuracy of how these sticks are being read. And on top of that, these sticks are actually swappable. You have the ability to remove the front face plates of the Galileo controller so that you could swap those out for a customization design of your choice, customize the one that it comes with. Uh, but aside from that, also gives you access to these stick heads. You can pull that out and swap it with a couple of different supplied alternate designs. The pair of ones you have by default are fairly traditional height stick heads with a flat top. Uh, however, you have three alternative options you can swap in, one of which is a taller stick head, something you would traditionally use on the right stick when you want to have a little more refined, precise control. Something's very useful for things like first person shooters. Uh, and then a pair of sticks that seem to draw a little bit of inspiration from the GameCube in factory. You actually have one that has just a little nub top and another one that has that kind of ringed style grip design to it rather than the flat or simple design that is on the controller by stock. If you find you have a little trouble of keeping your thumbs on one of the sticks for a lot of times and you need a bit more friction, that ring design ends up being a lot more handy for those situations. Topping that off, there are also a pair of anti friction rings on the front facing of the plates, meaning that if you spin the sticks around a whole lot, you're you're gonna notice that they just glide right across the body without any kind of noticeably annoying friction. So games where you have to do a lot of rolling inputs or times you just have to spin the stick around like mad uh, ends up feeling a lot better on one of these as well as just helps reducing some of the wear and tear to the physical design of the controller as it's rubbing against constantly. Uh, moving on from the sticks, I also wanna talk about the shoulders real quick because these are also taking advantage of Hall Effect style sensors. In the case of triggers, the usefulness here is that it offers a degree of accuracy for the different levels at which you're holding and pressing the trigger down and in the case of the Galileo you also have the ability to turn on a hair trigger option where lightly pressing the trigger at all is going to register as a full pull which is very useful in games where you don't really care about having to read different pull lengths you just want to be able to have it register as quickly as possible when you press down on the button again something that is oftentimes very useful in first person shooter or even fighting game situations where you just don't want to deal with worrying about the travel distance anymore and you want to make sure the moment you press down on that button it's being read taking a look again at the front of the controller we have a mechanical style 
D-pad, meaning that you're getting a bit of a clicky register when you push one of the four directions. With the ABXY buttons making use of a conductive silicon switch, so instead of having that clicky feedback, uh, you're getting something that feels a little bit more like a traditional button press, but with a really satisfying amount of resistance and pushback. Topping off all those traditional buttons, there are a couple additional ones worth pointing out on the controller. There is a dedicated screenshot button, so you have an easy, simple way of taking an immediate screenshot without having to kind of awkwardly position your hands over whatever hotkeys it might be for your particular phone. Uh, and there are a pair of remappable back buttons that can be taken advantage of as well. There is an ability to hotkey this with onboard controls, though you can also take advantage of an app when using it on Android phones to more finely customize how these are used. Uh, but this gives you a way of remapping any additional buttons, which can be very handy in some games where, sure, something could be mapped to the B button, for instance, but it'd be really handy to not take your thumb off the right stick and instead have that feature mapped to one of those two back buttons. While we're taking a look at the back of the controller, something else I want to point out and shout out real quick is that the grip of the controller also takes advantage of laser etchings, giving a degree of friction so that way it feels comfortable to the touch, but gonna make sure that your fingers still have a nice grippy texture to it, so if you're playing for a really long time, maybe you have a habit of getting sweaty hands, that's not gonna be an issue. Going back to customization really quick, on a software level, there is a whole lot of additional stuff you can do with this controller if you take advantage of the GameStar app. This is something that for the moment is unique to using it with Android devices, can't do this with iPhone just yet, uh, but by making use of the GameStar app, you're able to have a whole lot of additional customization options over these sticks, triggers, and buttons. You can do things like activate multiple profiles that you can swap between. You can adjust trigger dead zones, stick dead zones, the stick sensitivities, uh, how diagonals are being read on the D-pad. Just all kinds of ways that you can further refine the controller experience to perfectly fit the way that you want games to handle and play. One other thing I forgot to mention is that because this is a dedicated wired controller that plugs into the phone, it doesn't rely on any kind of internal battery or anything you have to worry about charging. It just pulls from the phone itself and does feature a pair of pass-through ports you can take advantage of, including an additional USB-C port so that you can charge the phone while it's plugged into the Galileo, and an audio port so if there is a traditional aux headset you like using that, you know, if you're an iPhone user you may no longer have access to, thank you very much, the Galileo is going to make sure that you're able to actually take advantage of that when you're gaming on it. Overall, these features all come together to form a mobile controller that is very comfortable and feels a lot closer to using a more traditional controller than other options that I've used in the past. Uh, while it ends up not being quite as portable as some of the solutions out there, if you really want something that just feels like a traditional controller and you find yourself having hand cramp issues using other designs, this is gonna address that with that more traditional full-style grip while offering a large list of special features that are really useful to take advantage of. Uh, in particular, having those Hall Effect sensor sticks is just some nice peace of mind. It's something a a lot more people have become aware of over the past couple years. Remappable back buttons are of course always a tried and true personal favorite of mine that I just find really useful across a large number of different games. And the ability to swap out and customize the face plates along with swapping the sticks to fit a particular style you prefer uh, just allows you to also make it your own a little bit. If you play a lot of app games that would benefit from using a controller grip or you like using your phone for remote play, this is the kind of thing that I find is really useful to get a hold of to really just make the experience feel as seamless as it can because it helps make it feel like you're using a actual dedicated handheld rather than having to rely on things like traditional phone touchscreen controls. If you're interested in learning more about the Galileo or want to grab one for yourself, I do have a link posted down below in the description. Once again, I do want to thank GameSir for sponsoring today's video. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button to let me know. Subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you guys later.